As you might have noticed, for the last few months, energy prices have been going a bit crazy. As the pandemic recedes and energy demands return, almost every part of the globe has suffered some sort of shortage. It started in January in Asia when a cold winter forced Japanese energy prices sky high. And China has to shut down some of its factories to conserve fuel. It then spreads to Europe, when low inventory and insufficient renewable capacity pushed gas bills through the roof. In February, the UK announced that the energy price cap, which essentially dictates domestic energy prices, would increase by nearly 60% compared to six months ago, or nearly double what it was a year ago. It was a similar story across most of Europe, with the exception of France, who forced the state-owned EDF to sell electricity to lower than market prices to limit domestic price increases to 4%. Nonetheless, if you thought that was bad, it's looking increasingly possible that things are about to get much, much worse. With Russia's war in Ukraine ongoing, some Western countries are now considering sanctioning Russian energy exports to limit Russia's foreign exchange reserves. Somewhat paradoxically, Russia has actually threatened the same thing, warning Europe that if it continues interfering, Russia will cut off its gas exports via Nord Stream 1, which would push already sky-high European natural gas prices through the roof. So in this video, we thought we'd take a look at what would happen if Russia cut off natural gas supplies and how it could plausibly trigger a global energy crisis. So far, we've released a ton of videos explaining and contextualizing the Russian-Ukraine conflict. So if you want to stay in the loop and understand the war around you, then be sure to subscribe. Currently, only about a quarter of you have, so we'd love your support. Thanks. So we're going to split this video into two parts. First, we're going to look at whether sanctions on Russian energy exports are actually going to happen, or whether they're just too painful for all involved. And second, we're going to explain how this could affect Europe and potentially spill out into a global energy crisis. So let's get into whether these energy sanctions will actually happen. To give you a bit of context, Europe is remarkably reliant on Russian oil and gas. Russia currently sells about $700 million worth of oil and gas to Europe every day, and it uses this foreign currency to prop up the ruble. This is because Russian exporters are currently required to use 80% of their foreign exchange reserves to buy rubles, which artificially increases the demand for, and therefore the value of, the ruble. Unfortunately for Putin, even with these measures, the ruble is continuing to collapse in value. At the time of writing, one dollar buys 135 ruble, which translates to about a 30% drop in value from a week ago, and about a 50% drop from a month ago. If Europe wants to sanction Russian energy exports, this would inflict serious damage on the ruble and Russia's economy more generally. Now, you might be thinking, why can't Russia just sell its energy to someone else like China or India? And while some trade adjustment is inevitable, A, it'll take time, and B, there's an upper limit. This is because, while Russia might be able to sell its oil elsewhere, Russia sells most of its natural gas to Europe via pipelines. If these pipelines are sanctioned, then gas can't easily be redirected, because, well, you need to build an entirely new pipeline. And European gas exports account for a vast majority of Russian gas exports. According to data from 2016, European exports accounted for 75% of all exports. Russia is taking steps to diversify its gas exports away from Europe, most notably by constructing new pipelines with China. But these won't be ready until 2025 at the earliest, and even then, they're only expected to have a capacity of about 50 billion cubic metres, just 30% of the 167 billion cubic metres capacity Russia currently has with Europe. So you get the point. Sanctions would hurt Russia. Obviously, though, they'd also hurt Europe. As we mentioned earlier, Europe is already suffering from relatively high energy prices. Russia supplies about 45% of Europe's natural gas, but this figure disguises the massive variation between European countries on this front. For example, Austria relies on Russia for all of its natural gas, which accounts for about 20% of its total energy mix. If Russian gas stopped flowing, these countries would see significant gas and energy prices, and possibly even shortages. 
Even without sanctions, war-related disruption to energy markets has pushed US domestic gasoline prices to a 15-year high of $4 per gallon, and Brent crude is up 80% on year. The point is that while sanctions would cripple Russia, they'd also push international energy prices even higher, and possibly lead to shortages. So will this actually happen? Well, some people like the idea. UK Foreign Secretary Liz Truss suggested limiting Russian energy imports in February, while Canada has already blocked Russian crude oil imports. As you'd expect, Ukraine has been pleading with the West to cut Russia's energy supplies off. Fortunately for Putin, not everyone so keen on it. On Monday, Germany and Hungary came out explicitly against Russian energy sanctions, arguing that Europe's energy cannot be secured in any other way. It's no coincidence that Germany and Hungary are more dependent than average on Russian gas. Germany relies on Russia for about 60% of its natural gas, which accounts for 27% of its total energy mix, while Hungary relies on Russia for nearly 75% of its natural gas, which accounts for 32% of its total energy mix. All in all, multilateral Russian energy sanctions on the Western side look unlikely, at least for the moment. Nonetheless, this doesn't mean that they won't happen. On Monday, Russia's Deputy Prime Minister, Alexander Novak, threatened to cut off Nord Stream 1, which transports gas from Russia to Germany via the Baltic Sea. Again, this isn't looking supremely likely in the near term. After all, it would cripple Russia's already damaged economy. But if you combine the probability of Western sanctions on Russian energy with that of Russian self-sanctioning, well, the total possibility that Europe ends up with no more Russian gas becomes quite high. Which leads us on to the second part of this video. What happens then? More specifically, will we see a global energy crisis? Well, obviously, no one knows for certain, because, well, the global energy market is impossibly complicated. But there are some reasons to be concerned. For starters, without sanctions, the war and its accompanying disruption has pushed energy prices sky high. European natural gas prices hit an all-time high of €345 Euros per megawatt hour on Monday, literally 10 times its usual level. Sanctions will push prices even higher and force Europe to try and buy liquefied natural gas on the international markets, which could, in turn, push up global energy prices. Historically, energy crises have been localised, but the globalised nature of the energy market, and specifically the liquefied natural gas market, means that acute crises in Europe could spill out to the rest of the world. The liquefied natural gas market will be unable to meet this new demand, because, well, new liquefied natural gas supply projects take four to five years to build, and historically low prices have discouraged investment in the liquefied natural gas infrastructure. The war in Ukraine is also going to push up inflation. Ukraine and Russia both export a fair amount of commodities and food. For example, Russia produces 40% of global palladium supplies, and Ukraine is responsible for the majority of global neon gas exports. Ukraine alone accounts for 17% of global grain exports and 12% of global wheat exports. As a result of the war, over the last few days, both food and commodities prices have shot up. On Monday, palladium, tin, lead and zinc shot up by 7, 9, 10 and 11% respectively. Nickel jumped by 70% in just 24 hours. Because they're used in a whole load of manufacturing processes, these higher commodity prices will translate into higher inflation across the board. Similarly, wheat prices have now reached dangerously high levels, up 50% in a month. The point we're making is that if inflation continues to rise, which means people have to spend more money on the basics, like, well, wheat, and energy prices also go up, much of the world just won't be able to afford to use as much energy as they're used to. Ultimately, this could lead to what commentators described as demand destruction, when consumers just get used to using less energy, instead of paying more for the same amount, and demand permanently resets at a lower level than before. This might sound like good news to the climate conscious among you. After all, it would probably be better for the planet if we all used less energy generally. But it's worth saying that demand destruction is usually accompanied by an economic recession. So that's the reason that some commentators are worried. It's possible that an energy crisis in Europe could spill out into the wider energy market. Again, we should caveat all of this by stressing that ultimately no one knows what will happen. Globalised markets are complicated, and it's still unclear how the war in Ukraine will pan out. If you want more updates on issues like this, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. 
Not only do we appreciate your support, but with only a quarter of you subscribed thus far, you could be missing out on future explainers and updates. So subscribe to better understand the war and the world around you.